<laughs> hello, hello, Danish Noodles. Uh, I am alone. You do not see anyone else on the screen. It's just bright in the east well, like, direction. Bright? They actually can't see us. So, um... Are you sure about well, that? Well, they can see me. Are you sure about that? I'm looking at the stream. Oh, really? there's a derma. <laughs> well, like, they can only see us like when we talk, but they can't. They couldn't see us when you said that. <laughs> no, no, they can. Bright's got this thing where she has our uh, profile pictures up on stream. And they light up when we talk. Yeah, I can send you where you can change your profile and to like do different animations and stuff. Hold on. There you go. I sent it to you. Yeah, but it is pretty cool. But anyways, who ready? Aliens. Okay, take that as a guess. The first anomaly of the night is going to be SCP-2194, also known as Filth. Filth. Alright. Oh yeah, I should probably show you, get you guys a picture of the anomaly. Are you just going to put those in stream planning? Uh, in the chat. Voice right. chat. Yeah. yeah, there you go. SCP-2194 is a phenomenon affecting densely populated urban areas, which appears to manifest in the presence of persistently excessive quantities of refuse and waste. SCP-2194 manifests as an amorphous and partially mobile mass of common refuse, dead microorganisms, fecal matter, live bacteria, assorted particulate matter and other forms of biological and non-biological waste. It is currently unknown whether the initial mass of SP-2194 originates as non-anomalous waste that assumes anomalous properties or forms spontaneously through other means. SCP-2194 propagates via direct physical contact, gradually spreading to adjacent surfaces as a brownish film of waste and particulate. Refuse and refuse waste and dead biological matter becomes incorporated into the mass of SCP-2194 on contact. Should a material affected by SCP-2194 come into direct contact with any surface including the skin of a live organism, it will leave a stain at the point of contact. The stain spreads at a relatively low rate, however, any attempt to abrade, dissolve, corrode, or otherwise remove this stain results in the formation of an amount of material roughly double the amount removed. Avian and mam mammalian subjects exposed to SCV-2194 are invariably distressed by the appearance and growth of the stain, becoming increasingly frantic in their attempts to remove it. This behavior causes the rapid spread of SCV-2194 material across the body surface. Once SCP-2194 material covers at least 33% of a live organism's body surface, the organism becomes an instance of SCP-2194-1. Instances of SCP-2194-1 are capable of spreading SCP-2194 via direct physical contact and display extremely unhygienic behavior characterized by an obsession with both SCP-2194 and other non-anomalous forms of waste. These behaviors include, but not are limited to, covering self in waste, covering nearby objects and services in waste, collecting large quantities of refuse and dead material to add to the main mass of SCP-2194, immersing itself in, into SCP-2194, ingesting SCP-2194, and attempting to data expunged, causing SCP-2194 to spread to other individuals. Instances of SCP-2194-1 typically expire within 5 to 7 days of exposure, often due to suffocation caused by the formation of an overwhelming 
amount of waste material in the lungs and air passages. Larger organisms may re remain alive as long as 18 days before expiring from the effects of blood poisoning and necrotizing uh, facilities. SCP-2194 can be partially removed by sustained exposure to an open flame. However, its regenerative properties in response to attempted removal allow a minimum of 10% of the material to remain on the surface even after several minutes of continuous burning. Its generation is 100% effective in the neutralization of instances of SB2194-1. The most effective containment method currently known is the use of expanding foam sealant to cover all surfaces affected by SB2194 provided that sealant is applied thoroughly and within a space of two hours. SCP-2194 is capable of spreading to the exterior surface of the seal in no less than 200 hours. Timinous reapplication prevents this occurrence. So... So that... I realized my visual model was slumped when I was reading. <laughs> so we also have an ex have you been infected with the world tree? Possibly. Was your two world model been infected with the filth? Maybe. Uh before uh I read the experiment log and addendum. Uh, I, f I needed to read out the string because I forgot. Dipshit. Shut up. I am still heard, right? You can still be heard, but you're, uh, you're, you're cutting out. A bit. Yeah, you're you're basically what Discord does to me a couple times. Uh, is that actually good? She good? Okay. I'm connected again. Alright. Hello. Hello. Alright. Ready for the addendum and experiment log? Yeah. Alright. Addendum 2194-01. As of redacted 2015, redacted SCP-2194 quarantine zones exist. No means of permanent removal or disposal of SCP-2194 have yet been identified. Research is ongoing. Experiment Log 2194-01 A sample of SCP-2194 is currently housed at Biological Attainment Site 66. The following experiments making use of the sample are aimed at determining effects of methods of removing and or containing SCP-2194. Means of removal. Redacted brand industrial stain removal. Or remover. Application. Stain remover applied using mechanical arm and disposable cloth to an SCP-2194 contaminated surface area approximately 5 cm squared. Result. SCB-2194 partially dissolved into solution and proceeded to cover all areas the cloth made contact with. Contaminated surface area increased to approximately 28 centimeters squared, cloth sealed in biohazard storage unit. Means of removal. Concentrated hydrochloric acid solution. Application. Acid solution applied to contaminated surface with hose. Result. SCB-2194 partially dissolved into solution and spread to all areas solution made contact with. It is recommended that further tests explore the use of non-corrosive agents. Means for removal. Industrial belt sander. 
Application. Belt sander attached to mechanical arm and applied to contaminated surface. Result. SCP-2194 began to spread rapidly across the surface belt. Belt sander ceased functioning after 1 minute 23 seconds of use. Deconstruction revealed machinery to be jammed by large quantities of SCP-2194 components sealed in biohazard storage unit. Means of removal. Industrial blowtorch. Application. Blowtorch attached to mechanical arm and applied to contaminated surface. Result. SCB-2194 reduced to approximately half of its original surface area in 2 minutes 3 seconds. Fleet removal could not be achieved. Okay. Alright. Now it goes to the sealant test. Sealant. Concrete. Application. Concrete mix applied to contaminated surface. Result. SCP-2194 dissolved into liquid component of concrete mix, contaminating a large amount of the material, seal, and effective. Sealant. Molten iron. Application. Molten iron applied to contaminated surface. Result. Seal initially appeared to be effective, however, a large growth of SCP-2194 was observed to expand rapidly beneath the layer of molten iron. 52 seconds after application, the growth broke the seal and erupted, expelling SCP-2194 material into the walls of the test chamber. It is theorized that SCP-2194 reacted to the extreme heat of the molten iron as it would to attempted removal, but was not affected by the heat level as it would be attempted by an open flame. Sealant. Expanding polyurethane uh, your, your foam. Application. Foam sealant applied to contaminated surface as a spray. Result. No accelerated growth observed. Seal remained effective for approximately 200 hours before outer surface began to some sh show signs of contamination. Effective containment method identified. Okay, so for the disease, it talked about uh, above the F1, I forgot what it was called. Facitis. Uh, in the footnotes, it, it means flesh eating bacteria syndrome. Okay, so it's a, a mass of trash, crap, and waste. So that in, can infect living things. So that's my problem. Yeah. That was meant to be a joke. Ah. <laughs> So, damn. <laughs> I'm getting I, messages from a friend right as we start this on the big, uh, not all here. That okay. I was not expecting a, a pile of crap to be a keter. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know at the SCP Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, where do you think we should put this? Thank you. So far, I'm kind of thinking a certain group at the moment. Does no, that I mean hmm? like? The biggest threat about it, in my mind, is the uh, Dash 1 instances. Yeah. The people that become obsessed with spreading the filth. Yeah. And it's like... Like, if too many of those got out... Mm-hmm. 
I feel like they could very easily probably fuck over an entire city. Yeah. And it's like, and once it gets to that level, like, what the fuck do you do? Well, probably I... nuke, pr probably a nuke or napalm. I mean, it's not the first time Foundation has done it. Have we looked at Japan? <laughs> what? Remember the emoji SCP? Well, I know they. I mean, I know they killed like a whole shit ton of people with the big G word, but I didn't know that they specifically used nukes. Well, I don't that think they use sense. nukes. I, I think yeah, they that's... just they just wiped out most of Japan. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, that's well. still by far one of the most deranged things in <laughs> And what's worse, that was a joke SCP too. Yeah, I mean it, it follows that it's a joke SCP, but still it's like God. Foundation's reaction to it. I mean, if we also gotta think about it, the Foundation also sent D-Class to the sun. That's nothing compared to this. <laughs> yeah. Like, jettisoning a few, like, death row inmates into the fucking sun <laughs> is absolutely nothing compared to wiping out the majority of the population. That's true. I don't think we'll get to it, but I know there's an anomaly where the Foundation is just doing as much damage to this tree to make it, make it uh, scream. Just to make it, yeah. try to make it scream. Aww. Even though it yeah, can't yeah. scream. <laughs> They're just torturing a poor oh, tree. Wait, wait, I didn't miss that part. The tree can't scream? Yeah, th there's so many test logs, but the tree has yet to scream. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even I'm gonna go ahead, Adorna. That foundation, I want to. That's just. It's not even sapient or sentient. They're just fucking over a tree for no reason. If I remember correctly, I think there's more test logs for that anomaly than 682. Oh my god. <laughs> well, they spent more time <laughs> on a tree. Torturing, <laughs> torturing a tree. <laughs> what the fuck? That's yeah, there's, there's a, literally a meme about Foundation just screaming at a tree. Yeah. It's yelling at it, why won't you scream? Whichever reality that foundation is in, they have a new enemy. <laughs> Welcome to the Serpent's Hand, Aderna. <laughs> I the author to that SCP had a bone to pick. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. They had a tw twig to break. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. But anyways, on to the, the pile of crap. <laughs> uh, I want to see what... Uh, MTF are sadly have to deal with this thing. <laughs> Mobile Task Force Gamma 9, also known as Cleaners. Damn. <laughs> I, I'm pretty the sure that's a really shit job. The fucking trash man was right there. I'm the trash man. I I throw garbage all over the wing. Then I start eating garbage. Um. 
But anyway, I'm kind of caught between certain group and city. Yeah. And also, again, the longest they're able to contain it is 200 days. Uh, yeah, so basically the only option to, like, long-term get rid of it and deal with it is fire. Yeah. I'd say city. Yeah. So we also got to think about it. it reacted to the molten iron when it got close, close to the heated levels that it, it tried to leave. Well, yeah, but like they said, that was probably just its standard reaction to trying to be clean. Yeah. Just like compressed underneath a sheet of molten metal. Oh, hey, book. Oh, hi, book. Oh, wait, what? Oh, hey, book. Bookworm <laughs> lit YouTube chat on fire. Why is my chat on OBS delayed? <laughs> so, Hatchet always sees the messages before I do. Hey. Also, Bookworm, I hope you're aware that you just waltzed in here and immediately started a trash fire. Yeah. Okay. All we're talking about trash fires. True, but Bookworm decided to actually start one. Okay, so here's the thing. I know the one below this one isn't a Keter, but literally, the one below the next anomaly we're going to read, its nickname is the Cross Dimensional Barbershop. Oh. <laughs> but no, that's, that's not cool. the one we're reading. <laughs> But it has a really cool nickname. <laughs> Although I guess, come to think of it, anyone who lights your chat on fire is starting a trash fire because wow. it's on your channel. Wow. Okay. All right, and, you make those jokes yourself. I know. <laughs> also, uh, the next anomaly is actually a very popular one. SCP. Uh, 2200, also known as Solberg. Huh? Solberg? Solberg. Yes, Solberg. Yes. Anyway, SCB 2200 is a collective designation of several interrelated anomalous phenomena. SCB-2200-1 is a sword 80 centimeters in length, composed of an alloy of silver and copper, estimated to have been constructed between 1000 and 500 BCE. SCB-2200-1 is luminescent, uh, giving off a blue light at level of brightness directly proportional to the number of SCB-2200-4 Hundred four subjects residing in SCP twenty two hundred three. Similarly, increasing increased numbers of SCP twenty two hundred four subjects reverses deterioration caused by SCP twenty two hundred one's age, making it a more effective weapon. SCP twenty two hundred two refers to the, a, the human individual who is currently bonded. With SCP-2200-1, SCP-2200-2 subjects cannot separate themselves from SCP-2200-1 in any attempt to forcefully remove it from the subject's grasp will result in the immediate death of the subject. Similarly, surgical removal of the hand or arm bonded to SCP-2200-1 will also result in death. When the when an SCP-2200-2 instance dies. SCP-2200-1 anomalously relocates into the hand of another individual and instantly bonds with them. There is no apparent limit to the distance of SCP-2200-1 can travel when transporting itself into a new subject. SCP-2200-1 appears to selectively bond with subjects that share a similar set of traits. 
which suggests that it may be intelligent to some degree. Bonding with SP2200-1 will cause subjects to suffer from an anomalous form of acariosis, which is, hold on, a skin condition caused by high qualities of silver in the body. Quantity. High Quantity. Quantity. Sorry. Which causes their skin to rapidly develop a distinct blue hue. If an SV2200-2 subject does not end a human life for an extended period of time, SV2200-1 will relocate itself. After bonding with SV2200-1, SV2200-2 subjects experience heightened epiphrine and testosterone levels and immediately gain an understanding of SP2200 in its entirety. These factors combined with the SP2200-2 subject's background have invariably resulted in SP2200-2 killing no those around them with SP2200-1. SCP-2200-3 is a 50 km square area of land located in Redacted. Whenever a person is killed by SV-2200-1, a likeness of the individual formed out of an anomalous silver-based alloy will appear in SV-2200-3. Despite being made of inorganic material, instances of SV-2200-4 are fully animate and capable of localization. Interviews have shown that SV-2200-4 instances share the personality and memories of the victim they resemble. Because of their metallic composition, SV-2200-4 cease aging after their conversation and are resistant to physical damage. SV-2200-4 do not need to eat, drink, or sleep in order to sustain themselves, but may perform these actions if they so choose. Instances of SV-2200-4 that leave SV-2200-3 will cease animation upon setting foot outside this designated 50 km square space. SB2200-4 instances seem to be innately aware of the dimensions of the safe area. Any that leave remain permanently inert and cannot be restored from being returned to SB2200-3. Document 2200-A. Characteristics shared by SB2200-2 subjects. Between 15 and 45 years of age. Physically active. Strong fear of death. Negative view on what of what happens after death. Psychological and emotional instability. Those are needed in order to hold the sword. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I've I've heard about this SCP before. If I remember correctly, like in the uh um, Somewhere else, it's talked about how basically, yeah. it, when someone take gets the sword, they immediately are convinced that killing the people will save them in some way. And I guess they kind of do because mm -hmm. you give them basically an immortal life, but trapped within that area. Yeah. Either way, this would just be certain groups because it's yeah. basically on the level of any other serial killer. Yeah, I just gotta make sure not to give this sword to Jeffrey Dahmer. He would not fall into the criteria. Oh. Yeah. Like, you literally just read personality traits that are required to yeah. use. I don't I don't think Dahmer fell into those traits. Though I also haven't looked into much of anything about him in a long while. It's it's been a while since I kind of tuned out of a lot of yeah. well basically anything having to do with true crime. The only thing I know about Jeffrey Dahmer is when Banos made a death row map making fun of the the Netflix series. I mean that's that's kind of warranted 
<laughs> it's it's like making fun of the series itself because it's literally it, its only purpose in existing is to create a a profit slurping franchise out of the crimes of an egregiously awful person. Yeah. Anyways, the next F anomaly is SP-2204, also known as Triple Threat, Intercommunal Men of Obscurity. The fuck kind of name is that? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bad buddy cop movie. Okay, apparently the SCP logo turned into the, uh... LGBTQIA plus symbol upon going into this anomaly. Ah. So it's a based SCP. I don't I don't know what this means, but it's object class Keter in parentheses provisional. Oh, provisional mean it's uh it's pretty much saying like it depends kind of yeah okay can i say something yeah i went down the beginning the part where it says is the keter is a hide it is a document that hide another document oh yeah the actual document of this anomaly is safe class oh <laughs> Wait, so do we even, like, do we even do this? I don't know. Do we even read this for this? I, well, I guess it's provisional. So, like, sometimes it's a keter and sometimes it's safe. Okay. Well, actually, when we clicking to open the document, uh, that open the secondary document that's the actual document it says any information regarding SB 2204 must be gained via an in person visit to Oak Grove, Kentucky. And upon clicking it, you can see the actual document. Oh. Wait, so the surface level that we see is if you're viewing it elsewhere, but as long as you're in fucking that town in Kentucky, you can see the the safe class? Yeah. Or is it the opposite way around? Apparently, when going to Oak Grove, Kentucky, you see the safe class. So it's a Keter, literally. Okay, I think we can... Okay, I think we can say that this is a Keter if the only place where it is a safe class is in Kentucky. But I don't know. You, you, you okay. do what you want to do. I want to read the Keter part because it actually does sound really funny, <laughs> even though it's not a joke. Oh. Special containment okay. procedures. Containment of SB-2204 is undertaken... Wait. Did, like, is this like the start of the document? Yeah, but I have to read this and you'll understand why. Yeah, this okay, is the start so of the key the document. Start. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. My brain was dying yeah. to touch because it's, it's like... I... Yeah, I want to read the Keter one, though. <laughs> because it's, I guess the part of it being funny. Yeah, anyways. Although, if, if, oh. if you do, like, if you're going to read the Keter one, might as well read the easy one as well when you're done. Fair. All right. Special containment procedures. Containment of SB-2204 is undertaken by the research team stationed in Oak Grove, Kentucky. Said team has managed to communicate the following. Information of any kind regarding events transpiring in Oak Grove, even that which does not pertain to SB-2204, is unreliable. Containment of SB-2204 is high pri priority. Containment of SB-2204 is hazardous to personnel. Now, meaning... Full research or, or containment of SB-2204 is possible from the outside of Oak Grove. Personnel assigned 
to SME 2204 should be qualified to work with info hazards, anti-medics, persistent communal hazards, and of a personal disposition. For a list of funding and other resources requisitioned by the research team at Oak Grove, contact the budgeting office. Description Information regarding SB 2204 is incapable of leaving the town of Oak Grove, Kentucky. SB 2204's nature and prior properties are thus known only to the research team in Oak Grove, so long as said team members remain in Oak Grove. A limited amount of indirect and very general information regarding SB 2204 that which is present in this document has been communicated by the Oak Grove research team. So literally, if you leave, you lose all information in your own mind. <laughs> <laughs> so the, they just have a team that's stuck forever in Oak Grove, so they understand the anomaly. <laughs> that's oh. the Keter part. That's it. That's the key. Sound like fun. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just wondering. Okay. I just started laughing <laughs> at, at uh, like the the uh, s second bullet point and the third bullet point where containment of SB twenty two hundred four is high priority. Containment of SB twenty two hundred four is hazardous to personnel. <laughs> I don't know why I started laughing at that. I think I'm the only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got you laughing. I don't know why I found that funny, to be honest. So then, the easy class. So, okay. this is the safe class description. Alright. SCB-2204 is an anomalous phenomenon surrounding SCB-2204-A and SCB-2404-B. SCB-2204-A is a group of five adolescent human males, aged 17 to 24 at the time of writing, residing in the town of Oak Grove, Kentucky. Uh, dash 1, Marvin Alvarez, age 19. Dash 2, M Matthew Matt Alvarez, age 22. Dash 3. Michael Alvarez, age 24. Dash 4. Jerome Trier, age 24. Dash 5. Austin uh, Betancourt, age 17. 1, 2, and 3 are siblings. S, uh, and dash 2 and Dash 3 are fraternal twins. No, none pose any particular risk to themselves or each other. SV 2204-B refers to any works or communications produced by SV 2204-A, either individually or in a concert. SCP 2204-A, SV 2204-B, and any information regarding either the capability of leaving the town of Oak Grove, Kentucky. Physical objects will disappear upon re reaching the boundary of Oak Grove and reappear in some appropriate location within the town's borders. Observers outside of Oak Grove's border looking in at SB-2204 experience a mirage-like effect that renders the information or entities in question unrecognizable. A similar effect occurs for sound, which is distorted to the point of being unrecognizable. This effect applies both to human observers and recording equipment, those without prior knowledge of SB2204 will rarely recognize the effect as usual, as unusual. Individuals who leave Oak Grove immediately forget all information related to SB2204, with all persistent memories being altered to contain different material to form a coherent narrative that does not include SB2204. This effect typically draws on material from the individual's own experience. This effect is reversed upon returning to Oak Grove. Attempts to transmit SV2204-B or SV24-B related data electronically outside of Oak Grove results in a malfunction either in the device sending the data or the device receiving it. 
preventing the transmission. The nature of the malfunction varies, though any error message that appears will be placed with Groovy Baby. I kid you not, that's what it says. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes, Adarna. So this is about the Oak Grove one, right? The what? Uh, this is uh, in Oak Grove, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. Gro that, that might be in reference to what was it called? Darn, I forgot the name. Yeah. It it was a movie. Oh. Uh, uh, I guess we'll come back to it. Anyways. The exact param parameters that delineate, parameters. Uh, delineate what information can or cannot leave Oak Grove are unknown. A very unlimited amount of information has been communicated to the SP Foundation at large. SCP-2204 possesses a secondary cognitohazardous effect on persons who observe anomalous activity resulting in, from SCP-2204 or who are exposed to information regarding it over the course to, of five to seven weeks. Affecting subjects manifest a general disinterest in SCP-2204's anomalous properties, typically considering them unusual, but not find them noteworthy. Another nine weeks, no subject has voluntarily attempted any action that would trigger SV-2204's anomalous properties. These cognitohazardous effects are dis dissipate dissipated by regular exposure to information that, that calls attention to SV-2204's anomalous properties, such as this document. The effects are substantially, substantially more difficult to reverse in subjects who are native to Oak Grove or who enjoyed the music of Triple Threat. No, I think I'm starting to be affected because my mouth is like tripping over words. I, I'm not going to lie, like the last maybe five minutes of this document has just completely flown over my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Bray, yeah. just, just to men mention that, you do that already, so no. I don't think that's affecting you. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> See, Bokron agrees with me. The anomaly got me. Anyway. SCP 2204 A's members together comprise the members of the hip hop group Triple Threat with SCP 24 Dash A dash one and dash four responsible for production. Dash two and dash three responsible for writing and performing vocals. And dash five acting as a turntablist. The group has thus far released two mixtapes Spy vs. Spy and Jaguar, and one self titled album. Bookworm has mentioned in chat. Uh, that's the SCP. Uh, wait. That's the SCP work in action. I really can't remember the name outside of Oak Grove. Oh, okay. Uh, Derna, not my god brain. <laughs> Bookworm earlier on mentioned that this entire SCP can be summed up as a band that cannot leave their town. It's just yeah. a small town band that's stuck in their town and no one can remember anything about them once they leave the town. There is a note about the head researcher about it. Well, like, so, well, the thing was, I was like, like, talking about the groovy baby thing, specifically. Yeah. Like, yeah. because there was a very... Uh, there's a kind of like pop culture movie that like uses it. Like 
We should probably just read the the note about it. Because right. like the other paragraphs are just talking that yeah that band just makes music. <laughs> and That's and that and that the anti memetics department is on the case of the anomaly. <laughs> Dustus, don't be scratching at it. <laughs> yeah, uh alright. The note from Dr. Evitz, the head researcher of this anomaly. SCB twenty two oh four is, as you've probably realized by now, self containing. The chance of the outside world learning about it is effectively zero. The population of Oak Grove leads lives that are completely normal in every important aspect. There's nothing to suggest that either of these are changing anytime soon. If the Foundation was capable of knowing what we do here, there's no chance that they would bother funding it. If they feel that your talents would be better used elsewhere or that deceiving the Foundation in this way is somehow immoral, feel free to request a transfer. We're not afraid that you'll give up our secret, obviously. I should note, however, that this assignment is about as low risk as it gets, and you'll feel healthier not getting anesthetized who knows how often. At least that's what I think it is. Our research is undertaken for the benefit of SVCP 2204-A. Those of us who remain here believe that SV2204 poses an unjust restriction on these individuals and that our research may be able to identify a way for them to live more normal lives. They may be unaware of what they're missing, but that doesn't change anything. Not to mention that the world is being deprived of some rather good music. We're glad to have you aboard. Aww. This is spooked here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a small town band that's perpetually stuck in their small town. It, it, des it deserves the wholesome award. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh no. What? The, the next anomaly I'm seeing, I... Uh, if you're Catholic, you're not gonna like it. Cause, hey, what? Because the picture I've already seen of this anomaly is Jesus with a noose. On his oh, neck. yeah, I know this SCP. This is such a good SCP. It is, but if you're Catholic, you're not going to like it. <laughs> I, I feel like it's more just a general Christian thing that would have issues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The the movie I was thinking about was uh, Austin Powers. Oh, uh, okay. Also, right. question bright, because mm -hmm. I can't read it for shit. What are the, like, bottom four tiers again? Bottom four tiers. Yeah. Uh, only one spoo tier, what the fuck, and reassign. Okay. I was trying to remember, like, I knew there was spoo tier. I knew there was reassign. I couldn't remember what else there was. And it's what the fuck. Mm -hmm. Alright. Anyways. The next anomaly. SCP-2221. Make sure I the number correctly. Yep. Also known as a friendly agreement. Wait, wait. Before we continue, okay. Bookworm just said something very important in chat. Uh, hey, we started streaming 69 minutes ago. Nice. Oh my gosh. Shut the fuck up. That is very important information. The stream VOD and anyone watching this afterward would be sorely disappointed to not have that information said to them. <laughs> I read the first sentence on the anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I have not actually read this anomaly. All I know is that it's actually a really good one. That's all I know. And I'm just confused. But I'll read it. <laughs> An instance of SB2221 is an end-user license agreement of the yeah. sort commonly agreed but to by consumers in order to use software. 
Instances of SB2221 are typically found attached to free or inexpensive software available over the internet. They are us unusually long for EULAs, presumably to determine consumers from regarding, uh, from not regarding, from reading to the end. Near the end of the contract are three clauses believed to bring about distinct but related anomalous effects. Clause 189. You agreed that all worship, prayer, abiance, sacrifice, oaths, requests for guidance and or intervention, and any other invocations of divinity directed at any deity or deities listed in Appendix HVII will instead be directed at the serene tribune friend of the righteous hereafter referred to as Amicus. Furthermore, you agree that this clause uh, supersedes continue conscious intent with regard to the direction of the affirmation and functions of divinity. The oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, right, right. Listen, yeah. listen. I love you, but as a religious person, you are breaking me. You are <laughs> breaking me with these pronunciations. Send me the article. I'm reading this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Evo. Uh, okay. To be honest, Hatchet, my mind was breaking while reading it, and I was just in a daze of confusion the entire time reading it. <laughs> like, I'm liking it so oh. far, but my brain is breaking in on me. Okay, so, 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 so let's, put it, let's put it in the what the fuck tier as a placeholder currently. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is a provisional what the fuck tier. It's put right there for now, but it'll be moved. <laughs> but yeah, says my, it's my brain hurts. Bookworm says it's just colonialism. I, re I remember that being a pretty major thing for us, yeah. This I have site... actually never read this anomaly. Yeah, it's an end user license agreement that gets you sucked into a cult. Oh. Yeah. So let me. Okay. Oh, you didn't. Need... Oh, you didn't read the special containment procedures. I usually don't, unless it's like rather important. Oh, okay. I I feel like it'd be good to mention those, or maybe read them, or do you read them at the end? I feel like you read them at the end. So. Sometimes. But yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Description. An instance of SCP-2221 is an end-user license agreement, EULA, -E of the sort commonly agreed to by consumers in order to use software. Instances of SCP-2221 are typically found attached to free or inexpensive software available over the internet. They are usually long for EULAs, call them EULAs, presumably to deter consumers from reading to the end. Near the end of the contract are three clauses believed to bring about dis distinct but related anomalous effects. Clause 189. You agree that all worship, prayer, ob obese obeisance, that's a word I have not read in a long time. Oh, I thought that was ambiance. <laughs> this is oh why I'm God. reading it instead of you. <laughs> can you send me the, uh, hey, Hatch, can you, uh, tell me how to spell it so I can look it? Uh, O-B-E-I-S-A-N-C-E. <laughs> Obese. Obesance. It's probably great I'm not reading the rest of this anomaly. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think I demanded that I read this one? Anyway. My my question is why do do we let Bright do it anyways? That's a good that's a good point. I think because no one else wants to do it. <laughs> Most of the time. Fair. I know I wouldn't want to spend like two hours reading out loud. It breaks my brain. <laughs> anyway, uh, you agree that all worship, prayer, obeisance, 
sacrifice, oaths, requests for guidance and or intervention, and any other invocations of divinity directed at any deity or deities listed in Appendix H dot VII will instead be directed at the Serene tri Tribune, friend of the righteous, hereafter referred to as Amicus. Let's see. Okay, so it mentioned uh, we've got a footnote. Footnote one, appendix appendix H dot VII. I oh three eyes. I think that might be a typo. Uh, is extensive. It lists not only gods associated with major religions, but also the gods of extinct religions. Fictional set fictional satirical gods, philosophers, abstract values, and major political historical figures. Additionally, several phrases typically spoken without religious intent, e.g. darn it, thanks Obama, are specified. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> They spec the fucking thing that makes you invoke Amicus. Oh my god. You oh aren't my... allowed to say darn it anymore. <laughs> or thanks, Obama. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I forgot how great this SCP is. Furthermore, you agree that this clause supersedes conscious intent with regard to the direction of the aforementioned invocations of deity. So basically this entire thing is a big fancy end user license agreement mumbo jumbo way of saying, uh, anytime you speak of another God or invoke said God in any way, shape or form, it's actually gonna be the amicus now. Clause 191, you agree that friends of amicus LLC may access oh wait we've got another footnote friends of amicus llc is a legal consulting group based in fairfax virginia no it's near you bro oh no actually it's, Alter... a, it's only 10 minutes away from me i can go there wait seriously <laughs> oh my god don't dox yourself well time yeah, to go no. see a cult oh god damn it wait. All their known employees are currently under surveillance. It is unknown what effect revoking their care, their their charter would have on SCP-2221. Continued surveillance is recommended for the moment. Okay. You agree that Friends of Amicus LLC may access your consciousness for the purpose of exerting subconscious influence and or temporary control of consciousness for a period not exceeded 72 or 72 hours during any one week period so the company takes hold of your brain Clause two hundred oh, Cause Cause Clause two hundred sixteen. You and the friends of Amicus LLC agreed that any attempt to breach or modify the terms of this agreement or to bring suit against friends of Amicus LLC may be settled by aberration aberration in the Serene Tribunal. Three, uh, footnote three, attempts to arrange this arboration have so far proved fruitless. <sighs> I think that's the other part of why I tend to prefer Bright reading these, is just the fact that Bright doesn't get like stumbled on things like my brain does, Bright just plows through it, mispronouncing everything. But at least it gets read quicker. All right. 
Testing suggests that SCP-2221 is not an info hazard. Reading or looking at instances of SCP-2221 has no effect if the reader does not agree to the contract. It is extremely unlikely that such a contract would be legally enforceable in any known judicial system. However, it is believed that the effects of SCP-2221 result from the enforcement of result from the enforcement of the terms of this contract by unknown parties. Certain classes of individuals, including mentally incapable individuals, prepubescent children, and slaves, Whoa. are unaffected even if they agree. Presumably the because they presumably because they lack legal capacity to agree to a contract. How when did they you know what? We're not going to ask when the SCP Foundation tested this with slaves. Or where they did it at. We're moving on. Individuals I'm, in case... I'm pretty, sure we're, I'm pretty sure I know where they would have tested it with slaves if they did. But I they mean, probably like, might have like asked people from back there about like whether they sign specific contracts and stuff right so in other words you talk to elon musk's parents moving on oh my god uh, no no, no they, they would no if if they were to like sign the contract they would yeah it would get imposed on them so well no i mean I like, the con no, no 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 i mean like trying to find Slaves. Oh, yeah. They talk to them. Well, well, they would actually no. They would have to talk to Nestle. Oh yeah, true, true. Wow, this got dark. And it was. Uh, <laughs> you can continue reading. Uh, yeah. I'll be right back. Oh, you so want. you just you're just gonna fucking nope out of here. <laughs> that was a joke. I'll be right back. I won't be long. I just need to get water. Uh, also, do not pay attention to YouTube chat. I'm gonna go look at it right the fuck now. Anyway, I'll be right back. Oh, it's it's prob books probably like burning the place down. Let's see. Book says. Uh, let's see. Let me just read through this. Uh, bright is gone now. Also, yeah, no doxing. Uh, there, there's a lot. Or do I? Or just wait? Okay, so what the? Wait, so Bright was just okay. So so. Bright just randomly typed in shush book penis cult and you don't see me to book. What? Um, okay. Okay, yeah, so it's just colonialism and book take over Bright's channel. I'll consider it. Make her the make her the figurehead of this channel. <laughs> yeah, Bright Bright is the uh, the puppet king, the queen. That's odd. I've come to think of it, yeah, my, I think my brain defaulted to king because I've never actually heard of an instance where it's like a puppet queen. That needs to be used more hmm. in fiction. Anyway, or do I? Or does the whole stream see us laughing out loud? Because apparently I can't abbreviate that saying on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Wait. Wait, you're not allowed to just type LOL on YouTube? That's some real <laughs> oh, That is hilarious. What is Google doing to us? They're taking away our three-letter words. Also, yeah, no doxing. I'm pretty sure you're oh, allowed to use R. Or N-Rap. Oh, boy. 
That's really weird. Hey, let me just. I put lol in chat. No, it let me. It let me say lol. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, ar arbitration. Remember, you are a mod, so I don't know if that does that. Let's see. Bookworm says arbitration, basically legal practices. I was guessing that's what arbitration meant. Nice. And book and bright reading it keeps her busy, so she doesn't do weird stuff on stream like this. Huh? Now bright kicking her friends. I think bright needs to read again. She is really bored. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe. Uh, um, I typed lol. Booker says maybe, maybe mod because I'll type it now. Lol. Okay, so Bookworm can now say lol. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. What ha what the hell happened? Maybe it was like maybe book like made a mistake while typing it or something. <laughs> book book mistypes lol and somehow types a slur and then that gets caught by the auto mod. Oh my god. I don't know how. <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh... Yeah, now Bookworm's typing many lols. <laughs> oh, okay. Lil, Lil is fine. Had to just check that. Oh, okay, that's fair. Capital L O L. I love how since Bright isn't here, this basically just turned into a talk to book for a moment until Bright gets back. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to ensure that every moment possible of the stream that Bright can be bored out of her mind is is the case. What the fuck's going on? Bookworm says, oh, I didn't realize she left. I was clipping when she... <laughs> oh, I was clipping when she was... Oh, so, so, okay, so Bright started spinning her avatar because she was bored. Amongst other things. <sighs> it couldn't, uh, totally not feet stepping on Hatchet. And doing other stuff. I, I saw the stuff in chat. What else was Bright doing, Bookworm? <sighs> You are you are my mole. I left in Twitch chat. You're on a mole and hatchet's ass. <laughs> and hatchet doesn't respond to that. <laughs> More info from book. Book says, huh? <laughs> what else was Bright doing other than spinning? I don't know if I'm that kind of mole. I don't know if I'm that kind of mole. <laughs> look. Look. I'm just saying shit. What else was Bright doing? <sighs> just poking her at it. Just what? poking her head out from the sides of the stream. Oh, okay. In a in a rhythmic way, lol. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it should be just clipped of me entirely doing it. Just like what Bright does. Where she's anyway, I, uh, I guess I'll read on because of how yeah. slow I am. Anyway, uh... Oh god damn it! I realized I was muted in Discord. <laughs> the reason why Bookworm face? said that it, they were that kind of mole is because I said, "Yeah, the mole and hatchet's ass." Oh. 
I forgot it was muted in Discord. So you've just been for like the majority of my taking the piss out of you. You, you know what? You know what? You you deserve to continue to say muted. Man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, I'll continue reading. Okay, so we were after slaves, I think. <laughs> Don't word it like that. <laughs> How do you want me to word it right? It doesn't get much better. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, we were after it was mentioning that this end user licensing agreement cannot be signed by. Mentally incapable individuals, prepubescent children, and slaves. Is that better for you, right? Because it's still saying the word. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, go ahead. Okay. Certain classes of individuals are unaffected even if they agree, presumably because they lack legal capacity to agree to a contract. Individuals incapable of understanding the contract, such as those who cannot speak the language of which it is written, or sleeping persons made to press the button to agree to the contract, are also unaffected. These limitations have proven extremely disruptive to attempts to study SCP-2221 contracts. Effects do not extend to D-class personnel, who apparently lack legal capacity with whatever entity is enforcing the contract. That's one hell of a loophole. SCP-2221's lack of effect on D-class personnel makes direct experimentation difficult. The Foundation has performed extensive analysis on populations believed to be affected by SCP-2221. Individuals, individuals are assumed to be instances of 2221-A if they have created an account on a website or downloaded software known, known to host an instance of SCP-2221. The following behavioral changes have been observed in SCP-2000. <sighs> 2,221-A's and populations with large numbers of 2,221-A's. I forgot how much of a slog these are to read. <laughs> Greatly increased voter turnout and political activism. Instances of 2,200... I'm just gonna... How do I abbreviate this? Instances of SCP-A, that sounds awful. Instances of 2,221-A, oh, Jesus, who, who joined? Hey, Dick. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dicks. Venus. We're reading SCPs in tier listing them. I'm currently reading an SCP and getting caught up because I'm constantly reading numbers. And I totally didn't call Bookworm a mole in Hatchet's ass. God, shut up. <laughs> Instances of 2221-A in non-democratic or semi-democratic countries often affiliate themselves with protest movements or other subversive political organizations. Instances of 2,221-A seem particularly drawn to positions considered outside the political mainstream, including parties associated with both the far right and far left. Greatly increased interest in religion and issues of religious identity. Attendance of religious services is notably high in areas with large 2,221-A populations. Instances of 2,221-A in Muslim countries often affiliate themselves with Islamist movements, while instances in the United States may advocate 
for an increased role of Christianity in public life. Shifts in religious practices. Community punishment for deviating from religious law, often in the form of shaming, is common in 2,221-A dominated areas. Religious art from these communities incorporates nooses or patterns resembling nooses with unusual frequency. For example, Christian art tends to depict Jesus being hanged rather than crucified, while Hindu art often focuses on Yama hanging criminals. Despite Clause 189's reference to the worship of Amicus, instances of SCP-2221 are not typically observed worshipping a being of that name. One exception, POP-044-2221-A, -O -O -A, is discussed below. POP? I have no idea. I have read. Frequent extra judicial violence against alleged criminals. Okay. 2,221-A populations tend to be densely, cl dense, densely clustered. So while some communities are entirely composed of 2,221-A, it is rare for affected nations to have a 2,221.a population of over 0.05%. The most notable exception is, oh, pop must be population. Population 044-2,221-a and redacted, which until 2013 consisted, constitute, constituted, <laughs> You got 2013 session. constituted over 2% of the national population. Do, okay, do I read the events concerning population 044? I um, mean, if we understand what, like the danger of it so far. It's based, like, I feel like the spread of it's pretty minimal if there's not like something outside of the end user license licensing agreement. Fair. Eh, I'll just read it. Might as well go all the way. All right. In October 2012, cite 614 contacts the 05 Council to report armed mobs attacking foundation installations in Redacted. It is immediately apparent that these groups have inside information concerning the foundation. They demand that the foundation hand over SCP. Uh, Redacted, and there's there's four redacted SCPs, and 34 Foundation personnel to be put on trial. The October attacks on Site 614 are initially attrib attributed to the Republic of Letters, which quickly claims responsibility for leaking information leading to the attacks. At this point, the Foundation is not aware of any major 2,221 dash a populations in blank and the republic of letters claims are believed however examination of computers at site 614 reveals that any personnel reveals that many personnel have been using software hosting an instance of scp 2221 consensus within the foundation shifts to belief that the leaked information came from the foundation personnel having been subverted by the subverted by the friends of amicus it remains unknown whether the failure to find and report this instance of scp 2221 was due to negligence or deliberate sabotage site 614 personnel are detained for experimentation or examination field agents from site 115 and site 621 are sent to uh, Redacted under the command of site director Susan Picard, Picard to observe and report on the local 2,221A population. Population 044-2021-A. Due to ongoing political turmoil in the area, the foundation adopts a strictly defensive stance, repelling 
continued attacks on Foundation installations without responding in kind. Attacks against the local prisons are also noted. While local security forces repel most of these attacks, prisons in blank and blank are overrun by mobs. Prisoners at both locations are dragged outside and... I don't know if I should say that word. Uh, extrajudicially executed by a mob. Oh. The term itself has commonly very racialized uh, connotations. Oh. Starts with an L. Chew streaming. Anyway. Prisoners at both locations are dragged outside and unalived including prisoners who have only committed minor crimes, such as vandalism. Only er, <laughs> over the course of the next four months, changes in the religious practices of the local... Oh. Dick's left. Did Dick say anything? No. Nothing in stream planning? No. Okay. Hope that right. Really. <sighs> Over the course of the next four months, changes in the religious practices of the local Sunni Muslim majority are observed. Many local mosques begin announcing the call to prayer eight times per day instead of the traditional five. Decorative nooses are observed hanging in doorways often adorned with colorful cloth and elaborate patterns. Several imams believed to be instances of 2221-A are noted to add an additional prophet, Sadiq, to the traditional Islamic list of prophets, which... Oh, wait, we've got an addendum. Uh, Sadiq, like Amicus, translates to, the in to English as... Friend. So it's friend. When pressed for additional information on Sadiq, these imams are confused and deny knowledge of Sadiq. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. By April 2013, affected communities have begun surrounding the call to prayer. Sounding, begun sounding the call to prayer up to 30 times per day with little time left for other activities. Attacks on foundation installations cease. Population 44 distributes print versions of SCP-2221, thereby converting nearly all adult members of affected communities into instances of 2221-A, with the foundation no longer on the defensive. Field agents began to quarantine towns inhabited by population 04, 044, and unaffected civilians are evacuated to Foundation custody. The frequency of 2221-A calls to prayer continues to increase under prayer until prayer has become constant among the entirety of population 044A. 044, between May 24th and June 6th, every known member of population 044 expires of exhaustion and dehydration. The government of Blake Blank cooperates with the foundation in attributing these deaths to political violence. Field agents recommend recommended Waving the foundation's policy, yeah, waving the foundation's policy on political non-intervention in order to prevent similar occurrences elsewhere. Addendum 2021-I. Recently discovered instances of SCP-2221 have, in addition to Clause 2017. By reading this clause, members, oh, Jesus Christ. 
by reading this clause, members of any organizations listed in Appendix K. IV agreed to go fuck themselves. <laughs> The SCP Foundation was one of the organizations listed along with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Republic of Letters and several other groups of interest and in governmental organizations. Personnel who had read Clause 2017 were isolated and kept under examination. The addition had no discernible effect, least of all. Least of all a literal one, it is believed that Clause 217 is merely a taunt rather than an info hazard or legally binding addition to the document. However, supervisors are to make weekly reports on the behavior of Foundation personnel who have read modified versions of Clause 217. Okay, that is the end. Ah, Jesus okay. Christ. So, with the information on population 044, I want to say, I want to say this is somewhere between city and country. Yeah. Because that's, at, at the very least, that sounds as if multiple cities were affected by this, and in distributing those printed versions of the contract allowed it to spread far, far further. I, I think country is appropriate. Definitely don't, oh, book says definitely don't have choose stream, open in other tab and see you there. Wait, what? Don't worry about it. Wait, so while I was reading, you got bored, started fidget spinning your own character model, playing peekaboo, <laughs> left for a little bit, came back, and now you're fucking harassing a fellow streamer while you live. Are was, you kidding me? I was listening the entire thing the entire time. I understood. Uh, but I was still doing other things. Oh my God. <laughs> Note to self, it is not good to have bright not reading in these damn things. It's just you trying to read out those initial clauses broke every part of me. But yeah, anyway, I'd say, yeah, country is appropriate. Yeah. Do you agree, Adurney? What? Country? Do you yeah. Do you agree that that's appropriate for this? Possibly, yeah. Hey, Hatchet. Yeah. Huh? You know how that one of those recipes was really long name had a really long name. I forgot to send a picture of the last one, but here's the picture of this one. Um, the next SCP is SCP two 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 nine, the the gate of Ursa. Ma Major to the Senate and people of Rome. I'm sorry, read that again. The the gate of Ursa Minor to the Senate and people of Rome. Uh, uh my minor major or some major. Why is they minor? <laughs> I just shrunk the Ursa Major. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. This this. Uh, my my brain is so tired after doing that reading. Well, at least this one's short. That's good. All right. I mean, Ursa Major and Minor are constellations. That's what I was thinking. It sounded like con. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to say this. I, again, I re read the sentence beforehand, and I love this person's first name. Right. SCP-2229 is a telepathic entity that self-identifies as Sextus 
from Pillis Trio, Legate of Ursa Major, to, to the Senate and people of Rome. Hey, what? Sexist or sextist? Sextus. How is this spelled? Sex, T U S. Oh, sextus. Okay. Sex- yeah, sextus. Yeah, sextus. So, yeah, I was thinking it would probably be some kind of odd Roman name. But I also think it'd be funny if this thing was just self identified as a sexist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, yes, I am an anomaly. I identify as being a dick to women. <laughs> uh, anyways. My entire identity is wrapped up in not respecting other humans. <laughs> oh, so, um. So you're uh, Andrew Tate. Oh, God. You may also call me Elon Musk. <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> Andrew Tate. Donald Trump. Oh my God. <laughs> a lot anyway, yeah. SC... Back to the story about sex. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> SCP-2229 manifests to individuals with whom it chooses to communicate as an auditory hallucination of, of an individual speaking in classical Latin. By thinking in classical Latin, individuals are capable of in- initiating communication to or responding to communication from SCP-2229. SCP-2229 is not thought to have a physical form, but is capable of manipulating matter through anomalous means. When an individual communicating with SCP-2229 focuses focuses on a particular object or group of objects, SCP-2229 is capable of causing an object or group of objects to, to spontaneously disappear. Similarly, when an individual communicating with SCP-2229 focuses on a particular location, SCP-2229 is capable of causing an object or group of objects to spontaneously appear at that location. The Foundation became aware of SCP-2229 after agents monitoring psychiatric hospitals in the city of Rome noted that the existence of several individuals who claimed to have heard a legate of the bear speaking to them in Latin, demanding an audience to the current Roman emperor. Due to the frequency and similarity of the reports, the cause was immediately suspected to be anomalous in nature. Dr. Marcellus, the first designated liaison to SV-229, was dispatched to investigate the, the reports and attempt communication with SV-2229. Others incident logs. So far, I don't see anything dangerous about it. So might as well read the incident logs. Alright. Date January 5th, 2010. Oh, oh what? It is incredible that I mentioned that What? Discord is fucking you over. Eh, yeah, it's gone. And Hatch is back. Gotcha. Discord has assassinated Hatchet Head 33. There will be no words ever coming from Hatchet Head 33 again. Everyone now say your prayers. Man, shut the fuck up. Discord. Discord <laughs> finally connected me. Bright, take your Discord issues back. I don't want them. No. <laughs> take them back. <laughs> You're saying. I have no idea. Right, I was I was saying that the word that you mispronounced is pronounced legged. It oh. was it was a uh, uh, it was a position in the Roman military. Uh. 
like general legged. That's the oh. thing. Anyway, I hate my life. <laughs> January 5th, 2010. Dr. Marcellus. Oh, Sextus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I broke reading it and broke reading it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Send me this one. You want to read the the incident logs? I'm I'm a I'm gonna read this in the most dramatic voice I can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so far, we don't know why it's Keter. It just comes to people and speaks to them in Latin. <laughs> well, I mean, it can't be contained. True. That's Keter. Yeah. All right, let's. You're down at the incident logs. Yeah. Open incident logs. Oh, did you read an entire incident log? No, I just read the date and the first two words. The first incident log is in 1997, not 2000. I skipped the first one. You dipshit. <laughs> It's because Safari pushed it up when I opened it, so I didn't see it. You're an idiot. <laughs> Date. June 5th, 1997. Begin transcript. Dr. Marcellius. Here, O oh Sextus Pontifex. <laughs> <laughs> Even you can't say that without yeah. laughing. Here, O oh Sextus <laughs> Sextus Pompilius Trio, Legate of Ursa Major, I, Titus Cornelius Marcellius, first citizen amongst the Romans, have heard of your desire for an audience. To what, to what do I owe the pleasure of your company? The SCP. O Titus Cor Cornelius Marcell Marcellus. Most honorable emperor, I, Sextus. <laughs> we can't say their first name Why did without they have laughing. To have this thing? <laughs> We're such children. I Sextus. want to see if this is an actually a popular person, and that's why it has that name. Sextus Pompilus Trio have long awaited your company. I come bearing good news, for I represent the illustrious people of Ursa Major, who live beyond the abode of the gods. We have seen your empire's glory, and wish to ingratiate ourselves with you to earn your internal friendship. Indeed, I have brought a most valuable gift. Look thither, 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 and concentrate. Dr. Marcellius complies, a scroll written in classical Latin, later found to contain a lengthy reference for manufacturing a variety of machines that utilize nuke, nucomen atro, atro, <sighs> atmospheric, nucomen at, atmospheric engines appears at the designated location. Dr. Marcellius. By Jupiter! What miracle is this? What does this scroll contain? SCP. A miracle. Oh, wait. I shouldn't be calling it an SCP. This is Sextus. <laughs> a miracle. That is what it should be called. Have your wisest scholars look on it. Given enough time, they will decipher it. Through your Though you yourself will not live to see it happen, certainly it will accompany them for some time, occupy them for some time, two millennia perhaps. In any case, now that you have witnessed the generosity and wonder of my people, will you pay homage to Ursa Major? Marcellius, in all truth, I will consider it. But what can your people, who are so great, want from my empire? 
which is so meager in comparison. Sextus, whatever your finest goods may be, bring them forth to me twice every year, so that I may receive them as a tribute for my people. For now, that is all I ask of you. Archelius, then by all means I will do so. I have but one request. Speak only to me and my successors, and not to the unwashed masses of my empire. These plebeians are far below you. By designing, by deigning to converse with them, you only injure your dignity. Sextus laughs. Very well. Let it be done. Let it be done. And transcript. Afterwards, subsequently, Dr. Markelius began making regular offers of tribute to SCP-2229 as the present day, as of the present day, SCP-2229 has not deviated from its initial behavior. Uh, okay. I decided to look for about if we want to stop for a moment. Okay. Um, he was a military... A uh, Roman military leader who, throughout his life, upheld the cause of his father Pompey the Great against Julius Caesar, a Caesar, and his supporters during the last civil wars of the Roman Republic. Oh, yeah, and also he was also a major character in the Shakespeare play *Antony and Cleopatra*. Oh, okay. As well as a major character. In 1682, opera titled P Pompeia. And again, also appears in George Frederick Handel's 1724 opera Giulio Caesar and Egitio, or also known as Julius Caesar in Egypt. Cool. So, yeah, apparently that is a, a famous person. Okay. Uh, date January 5th, 2010. Dr. Markellis. Oh, sex. <laughs> we can't say his name without laughing. Oh, sex. Hello, sex. Would you like to talk? <laughs> oh, Sextus Pompilius. I, Titus Cornelius. No, malware bites. What? I don't know. Get out of my face. Sorry for the informal bullshit there for a moment. Have brought the first tribute of the year. Ten bales of cloth dyed in Tyrian purple. Fifty amphorae, amphorae of... Yes, yes, I am sure that your offerings are all quite fine. Oh, this is, this is sexist again. Sexist. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure your offerings are all quite fine. Let me receive them quickly so that I can move on to the more urgent matter I wish to address. Dr. Mercurius focuses on the tribute offerings and they disappear. Okay, back to SCP. I'm afraid that I have more to ask of your empire than tribute today. Our people, as wondrous as they may be, are not warriors, which we are not in deep need of. O oh, Titus Cornelius, can your empire spare a legion? My people will be deeply indebted to your empire, and you above all will be held in our eternal esteem. Archelius. My empire would be hard-pressed to do so, for it would mean exposing my people to the threat of savage barbarians and treacherous rebels. Why do, you, why do your people need a legion, if I may ask? Have they become enthralled in war? That is not exactly how I would describe it. My people are obligated to fight, but not in a war, no. I would think of it more as a gladiatorial combat to provide the plebeians 
of other havens that are bred in circuses. We have no choice but to satisfy them with our own blood and with yours. To do otherwise is to antagonize the showmen, who are more dangerous to us with words than any other enemies are with swords. Your empire has warriors, my people may not, my people have not. I ask of you again, can your empire spare a legion? Marcellus, what if my empire does not? That's the key. What if a client does not honor his patron? What if a slave does not obey his master? What if a lesser does not follow his better? You, Titus, are the emperor, and you of all people know the answers to these questions. I will ask once again, and not once more, can your empire spare a legion? Marcellus, I offer my sincere apology. The question was most unbecoming. Yes, I will provide a legion for you at the earliest possible opportunity. Still, I must ask, how long do I have to do so? You have five days. Let it be done. And transcript. Afterward, due to potential consequences of non-compliance, Limited time frame and personal requirements for the Legion, a proposal to utilize a bright slash Zarchian humanoid replicator to fulfill the demand was sent to the Ethics Subcommittee on Human Cloning. After a day of deliberation, the proposal was approved by a 5-4 to four decision. Okay. June 7th, 2010. Silently... Dr. Marcellius focuses on the tribute offerings, and they disappear. SCP, you're usually more talkative when you deliver the tribute, Titus. I sense that something troubles you. Is it the Legion, perhaps? Sextus, it is not easy for a man to send 6,000 men off to war and to not know a thing of their fate. They fought boldly and died heroically. They lost their lives but gained their names. Can warriors ask for, ask for much more? Marcellus. I suppose not. Thirty seconds of silence. Marcellus, do you expect to ask our empire for a legion again in the future? SCP. No. The audience has seen enough of us, and the showmen themselves are quite satisfied. The next time it will not be our people who are, there will not be our people who are called on, but yours. Your warrior's performance was quite rousing, and in any case, I have been told that your people are already quite overdue for your turn at the arena. End transcript. Afterward, um, I mean, click the arena part. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, it goes to like a whole nother site. It goes to site 83. 83 Theoretical Anomalies Department, designation number 1822, connection type intrinsic. Primary class, Euclid. Containment class, Kudzu. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> that ain't good. <laughs> they, get, they to get the flamethrower goats. <laughs> oh, God. Or do you mean incendiary goats? Both. <laughs> yeah, I got them both. Special <laughs> containment pre procedures. As shown... Description SCP-1822 is the designation for a set of empirical proofs, empirical proofs derived from common laws and axioms of mathematical statistics, physics, and chemistry, including some power laws, Zipf's, Zipf's law, the Perto principle, the Stefan Boltzmann law, and the Rayleigh's genes law. 
the fuck does no. that have to do with our arena? See metaphysics and science of patterns from comparative pers- what footnote four what three it's just okay it's a whole bunch of oh there's two footnotes there was... it is to note that none of these are inherently anomalous on their own only behaviors they indicate are abnormal in indicate okay which show an anomalous propensity between unrelated phenomena often observed as unexplainable trends present in the large sets of in large sets of data scp 1822 implies that 80.8 comma 20.0 is universally constant throughout many extremely chaotic and complex forms of pro- probably oh my head oh probably okay there's a there's a footnote about kudzu oh God. are you kidding me named after invasive plant species the kudzu sub designation is given to anomalies which cannot be contained due to their relationship with conscious conscious reality I think I'm done reading this. Every every ounce of this is hurting my brain. Yeah. I. Yeah. So let's just go back to the other anomaly and not worry about the arena. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh God, it's my head. So that research is probably dead. Let's see. Um, uh. So it's a metaphysical arena, says Brooke. I guess. I have yeah. no idea. Wait, weren't you wanting to end stream around now? Yeah, that's what. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right, so. Uh, I mean, like, this thing seems self contained to roam. Mm hmm. But I don't, like,. I, I like the biggest thing that puts me off is that thing about like our people have yet to fight the arena. What the fuck is that meant to mean? And trying to find out what the arena is hurts my brain, so. It could, it could be talking about the, uh, the Colosseum. Oh, yeah. But then why would it link to that other SCP? Maybe that SCP is in the Roman Coliseum. Well, this wouldn't be the right. No, I don't know. This. Put this in what the fuck, dear. Yeah, because honestly, I don't even know what the fuck. Yeah, I have no clue. Like, it's power level, how dangerous it is. The only thing that it's hurt so far is taking a bunch of fancy shit and, like, a few thousand clones. And a researcher. Well, we don't know that the researcher was taken. Oh, yeah. He said your people, not you. Oh, yeah. Am I, am I doing the old man bit tonight? Yeah. Oh, wait. I see what Booker says. Or metaphysical call Sam because this guy is a dead uh, Roman. Uh, so he de- definitely doesn't exist in our reality. That's what Booker oh. says. Oh, fair. Yeah. That's I don't, fair. I don't think he was Roman emperor like this guy. I think it was. Wasn't he like a general or something like that? Like. Well. No. That that tracks with him being a like it. Yeah, like, like it, yeah. Well, at least we know this came from an actual person in history, which is kind of cool. Well, it's inspired by him. Yeah. I'm just wondering who would call their child sexist? Uh, people who don't have the same connotation on the term sex as us. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's probably just a completely standard name for them. Yeah. Romans says bookworm. <laughs> People who speak black. 